Imagine a laboratory where the boundaries between mind and matter blur, where researchers earnestly probe the enigmatic interfaces of human consciousness and physical reality. This is not the setting of a science fiction novel, but the real-world narrative of Princeton's Engineering Anomalies Research Lab, Pear Lab, born in a renowned institution celebrated for pioneering discoveries, the Pear Lab ventured into a controversial yet captivating scientific odyssey that challenged the boundaries of conventional paradigms. Princeton University, a beacon of scholarly pursuit, harbored one of the most intriguing and contentious research facilities ever to grace academia, the Princeton Engineering Anomalies Research, or PR, lab. Established in 1979 by renowned aerospace engineer Robert John, the Pear Lab sought to scrutinize the interactions between human consciousness and physical devices, a venture that straddled the realms of engineering and parapsychology. This introduction to Pear highlights its foundational goals, to rigorously explore whether conscious intentions could physically influence machines and to expand the scientific framework to include the observer as part of the observed system. The lab's establishment was a bold move, reflecting a profound shift towards embracing multidisciplinary research at Princeton. The Pear Lab was not just another research facility at Princeton, it was a pioneering enterprise that challenged the very fabric of scientific norms and methodologies. Born out of a curiosity to merge the subjective with the objective, the lab was set up with the aim to dissect and understand anomalies that standard scientific paradigms could not explain. Key figures like Robert John and psychologist Brenda Dunn were instrumental in shaping the lab's destiny. They steered a series of experiments that would eventually draw both acclaim and criticism from the global scientific community. From its conception in the late 1970s to its closure in 2007, Pear was both a beacon of innovative research and a lightning rod for debate. At the time of Pear's inception, the scientific world was primarily dominated by a materialistic view where measurable outputs derived from physical inputs were the norm. The 1970s and 1980s, however, were also marked by a burgeoning interest in alternative research, including the study of psychic phenomena and extended human capacities, which had begun to gain a foothold in serious academic discussions. This part of the essay explores the academic and scientific landscape during the late 20th century, providing a backdrop against which Pear's establishment could be contextualized. It was a time ripe for questioning and potentially expanding the boundaries of traditional scientific inquiry. The Pear Lab's research was groundbreaking in its focus on two main areas, human-machine interactions and remote perception. The experiments conducted in these areas were designed to test the potential of human consciousness to influence the output of mechanical and electronic systems without any physical interaction. One of the most famous tools used in these experiments was the Random Event Generator, or REG, a device that produced random outputs that theoretically should not be affected by human thoughts or intentions. However, Pear's findings suggested otherwise, showing statistically significant deviations from randomness when individuals attempted to influence the REG with their minds. This section discusses these core experiments and their implications in greater detail. Paralab's experimental designs were a blend of rigorous scientific methodology and open-mindedness to novel concepts. The challenges they faced were immense, primarily because they were treading into relatively unexplored territory. Measuring the subtle influence of consciousness on physical systems required not only technical innovation but also a robust methodological framework to ensure the validity and reliability of the results. This part of the essay delves into the specific experimental setups used by Pear, including the intricate calibration of devices like REGs and the protocols followed to minimize any external interference. The emphasis is on the lab's commitment to maintaining high scientific standards despite the unconventional nature of their research.
The results from Pear's experiments were fascinating and offered a glimpse into the possible interactions between mind and matter. However, these findings were not without controversy. While some in the academic community were intrigued, others dismissed them outright, citing a lack of reproducibility and potential methodological flaws. This section critically examines the landmark studies conducted by Pear, presenting not only the breakthroughs but also the intense scrutiny they attracted from other researchers. It discusses the peer review process and how the lab's findings were received in various scientific circles. The implications of Pear's research were profound, prompting a re-evaluation of some of the fundamental principles of physics and psychology. The lab proposed several theoretical frameworks to account for the observed phenomena, including the role of quantum mechanics in human consciousness. This part explores these theoretical implications, discussing how Pear's findings challenged conventional scientific understanding and suggesting potential areas where traditional and parapsychological research could intersect. Despite its closure in 2007, the legacy of Pear Lab continues to influence a wide array of disciplines, from engineering to psychology and even philosophical studies of mind and reality. Its work has inspired numerous researchers and institutions around the world to explore similar phenomena, leading to a gradual but noticeable shift in how the scientific community addresses questions of consciousness and reality. This section outlines the ongoing impact of Pear, including subsequent research projects and studies that have drawn upon its methodologies and findings. It also reflects on how Peer's work has been integrated into academic courses and continued research in anomalies. Innovation in experimental design was a hallmark of Pear Lab. Techniques like the random mechanical cascade and linear pendulum experiments were groundbreaking at the time and showed significant effects of human intention on physical systems under controlled conditions. These methodologies not only challenged existing scientific laws but also opened up new avenues for research in human-machine interactions. This part of the essay explores these advanced methodologies in detail explaining how they were developed, the principles they were based on, and the statistical significance of the results they generated. No scientific endeavor is without its critics, and Pear was no exception. Skeptics questioned the lab's experimental controls and the theoretical assumptions underlying their studies. Critics argued that the observed effects were too small to be of scientific relevance or that they could be attributed to experimental error rather than genuine anomalies. This section addresses these critiques head-on, discussing how Pear responded to these challenges and the steps taken to enhance the rigor of their experimental procedures. It also highlights the broader debate on the role of subjectivity in scientific research. The Global Consciousness Project, or GCP, was a direct offshoot of the ideas and technologies developed at Pair. It represents an ambitious attempt to detect interconnectedness and coherences in human consciousness on a global scale. The project uses a worldwide network of random event generators to test the hypothesis that significant global events affect the randomness of data produced by these devices. This section discusses the scope, methodology, and preliminary findings of the GCP, exploring how it aims to extend Pear's research into broader, more globally impactful phenomena. An intriguing aspect of Pear's research was the observed differences in results based on the gender of participants. Studies indicated that male and female operators tended to influence the machines differently a discovery that has profound implications for understanding how gender may play a role in cognitive and perceptual processes. This part reviews these findings and discusses potential theories that might explain why these differences occur. It also considers the implications of these differences for the broader field of consciousness research. The research conducted at Pear raises significant philosophical and ethical questions, particularly about the nature of reality, 
the role of the observer in scientific experiments, and the implications of potentially manipulating physical systems with the mind. These issues go beyond mere scientific inquiry and touch on deeper existential questions. This section explores these philosophical debates and discusses how Pear's work has contributed to ongoing discussions in philosophy of mind, metaphysics, and the ethics of scientific research. As we look to the future, the research initiated by Pear sets the stage for further exploration into the mysteries of human consciousness and its interactions with the physical world. This final section speculates on potential new directions for research, considering advances in technology, changes in scientific paradigms, and the evolving landscape of interdisciplinary studies. It discusses how future researchers might build on Pear's foundation, proposing new experiments, theories, and technologies that could further our understanding of mind-matter interactions.